Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting for August 5th, 2019 at 7 p.m. Welcome. Ms. Byron, when you're ready, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. Shamey. Here. Mrs. Hopkins. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. Thank you. And tonight we'll have uh, the invocation by Vice Mayor Lindsay. <laughs> In light of the shootings in uh, Texas and Dayton, uh, we'd like to have a moment of silence before the invitation. Thank you. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this evening to ask your blessings upon our state, our country, Father. We ask you to bless the, the people who was injured in the shootings in the Texas and in Dayton, Lord. Comfort their families, comfort their friends, keep a healing hand on them, Lord. Father, we ask you to guide this council, this administration, and this city, Lord. We ask you to protect all law enforcement, either local or across the country, Father. We ask you also to keep a, he a hand on our first responders, and protect them from any harm that may come to them. These things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. To the pledge here. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we'll need actions on the special meeting held 7-15-2019. So moved. Shammy. Mr. Shammy. Second. Okay. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Abstain. Wouldn't hear. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Minutes accepted, 6-0. Thank you. And then we all will need to have a motion for the regular scheduled meeting on 7-15-19. Make a motion to accept the regular meeting on 7-13-19. Second. Mr. Cook. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Abstain. Was not present. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Minutes accepted, 5-0. Thank you, Ms. Burner. And moving on to communications, none tonight. Drop down to the city manager's report. Mr. Bridge, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, members <coughs> of the public. I'd like to share with you the city manager report. Uh, I will say today is my first day back from nearly a two-week vacation, so it's great to be back here in town. I've been in Manhattan and moved my niece back to school in Alabama, but it's great to see everyone again. Um, informational items, Western Clark County Business Coalition, they uh, attended a, uh, a, a rebranding rent on Friday the 26th, um, and actually they changed their name to the um, Gateway Business District. Um, they felt as though the WCCBC name was a little too confusing and a little too long for people to follow, so they had a great rebranding event and changed their name to Gateway Business District. So, you, so if you do see that name around town, it is the formerly WCCBC. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> Please accept my apologies. Fire Chief, thank you so much speech. for helping us out with that. Speech. Uh, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> And moving on to the city manager report, the street lighting assessment legislation, we have our first round of those tonight beginning uh, uh, with a resolution of necessity. I am happy to report that we will not see an increase this year to our citizens. It is still remaining to 60 cents per linear foot. Uh, big shout out to Domino's Pizza. Uh, even though they have been sold to a new owner, um, they will not be building the swimming pool for any pizzas that was ordered through the May uh, months of May and June. Uh, they have decided to donate to them, so we uh, are very appreciative to Domino's Pizza for showing such a great uh, effort towards the success of our swimming pool. A new building update, our attorney is reviewing the construction bid documents. We have anticipated about two more weeks of that review. Once that review is done, it will go out to bid. 
tax budget, there was an, or, an era, uh, a formula era on the statement of fund activity sheet. Uh, basically, basically uh, the it was done on Excel sheets and the debt service funds, the formula did not add those numbers in there. Um, so we don't have to submit anything new to the county. That's not the point of, of disclosing that. Um, I'm just gonna make it right with council. So on 8-19-19, not 8-15 as the report states, we'll have our first ordinance to amend just that one page. But it has no overall impact of anything that we've done. We just need to make the correction. Um, and my last item on here, um, about a month ago, I was instructed by council to uh, uh, investigate a potential council misconduct at our fireworks show. Um, I would like to update on that and conclude it here this evening. Um, the Thursday, uh, the, the Tuesday before, I do believe I recall, was June 25th. I had a meeting with Councilman Cook and Councilman Cobb because I was not sure if I was going to be able to make the fireworks event. At that point in time, I said, please direct the cops um, because I don't know if I will be there. I don't know where their need's going to be. Um, and that was done. Um, it was told to them that this is the primary area, the softball complex area. So when a deputy was asked to go over to the pool, the, one of the three uh, contracted deputies that we had hired in just to work that event who doesn't know our town, they don't know our council members, uh, when one of the higher up deputies had asked them to go over to the pool, they, all they said is there was instruction to stay here. Basically, it was a miscommunication between um, who said what. At the end of the day, there was zero misconduct. No one violated the charter. Um, it was nothing more, nothing less than a breakdown in communication. I've been waiting for more information to come in. That information has not come in, so that tells me the facts have not changed. Uh, and the facts remain as that. It was a miscommunication as to where they were supposed to be and who said what. So what we do, hindsight's always 2020. So next year what I will do is I will get with the council members that head the fireworks show and then we will pre-place deputies at a certain location. And what that will do will avoid any confusion as to who is allowed to direct the deputies versus where they're supposed to be. But I want to stress it was nothing more than a miscommunication. There was no wrongdoing on any council member's part. That is all I have for my city manager report. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. I was just gonna to touch on one thing, just in case people don't know. When you when you mentioned the Domino's pizza, that's not pizza that, that the pool employees or people are just eating for free. It's pizza that the pool sells pizza supplied by Domino's, so that's what that is. I just want to clarify that. I don't want people thinking the employees are eating pizza for free or something. Oh, I had okay. Council. Yeah. Mr. Bridge. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Mr. Bridge, <clears throat> on the street lighting assessment uh, legislation, you, you said the cost will not increase to the residents this year. Mm -hmm. They can, will it, is it still possible for them to come to the city building? to find out how much they owe and write a check versus yeah. having it put on their taxes? Yeah, thank you. For Again bringing, this year? Yeah, bringing that up. Okay. That's something that we, it's the state of Ohio that allows that, and we'll have a legal ad. Basically, that's gonna start. We have the resolution and first intro of the ordinance tonight. Next week, we will have the voting on the ordinance. And once that ordinance is voted on, then we put a legal ad that goes in the paper that says that the street lighting assessment legislation is done. You have between these dates in September to come up and pay before it goes to the auditor. Because once it does go to the auditor, they do put on an additional small percentage. And we have a few handful of citizens that do like to come in and pay that before we send it up. But it, it'll be probably around the first week of September that that's actually ready to go. Because we gotta have everything back to the county, I think by September 23rd. Thank you. Yep. I have one more question, yes, if sir. I may, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> it's more of a comment <clears throat> on the uh, update and collusion that Mr. Bridge gave. I just want to stress to the people here and everybody watching this on YouTube, I said when the motion was made, I was not involved. I am still not involved, but apparently somebody thought it was. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew I wasn't there. I said so at that meeting a month ago, and I think a little more foresight would have stopped the entire thing. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
right, Council on the other comment on the city manager report. All right, moving on to resolutions. Ms. Burner, when you're ready, please. Hold on. Um, you skipped over eight comments from. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I jumped ahead. I apologize. So, uh, yes. <laughs> well, it's, it's all formatted differently. Yeah. Tonight. It is, it? Comments from members of the public. If anyone has any questions or comments, please go to the podium, your name and address, and try to keep it to five minutes, please. Thank you, Mr. Burner. Hi, I'm John Craig Walker. We are Seth and Mark Henry. In light of the shootings that have happened since the past two weeks, I have to ask the Chief and I think Chief and I have talked about first responders when they uh, get there. You know, they have a lot of PTSD later. And what is the procedure in that Chief? You know, no, nobody's really talking about the aftermath. The, drivers, the, the aftermath. The, the aftermath. The aftermath. Anything, anytime that any of our crews deal with a, uh, what we consider out of the norm, more stressful um, incident, we have what's called a automatic debriefing, which is an initial debriefing directly after the call uh, to make sure everybody's okay, make sure there's any problems. And then we will have another debriefing after that, say two or three weeks, two or three days later, to see if everybody is still okay. Uh, and the way those work, when I was, when I worked for uh, Wright Pat as a firefighter, I was also on what, what was called their SISM team, which is a critical stress debriefing team, uh, where we would go out and we would handle different uh, incidents like that. Um, and what happens in instance, you bring in outside people, not your own people. Uh, a lot of times it's very hard for peers to open up to peers in that type of situation. Don't want, they don't want to look weak, they don't want to look small. Um, so you bring in outside personnel, and when they have the meetings, there's no rank in the room, uh, there's no uh, boss in the room, and it's an open forum, and what's said in the room is kept in the room. It's not, not made public knowledge. Uh, there's no recording, no notes, no nothing. Uh, and then if someone does feel that they need something more than that, we will take steps to make sure that they get what they need. Um, all of our personnel know that, and especially with my office, I have an open door policy that if you have a problem, come and see me, come and see my officers, that we will do whatever we have to do to keep them safe. Is that also um, the open door policy that has to include uh, what you call third party? You know, if someone yes. would tell another yes. he's allowed to come in there. Yes, he is. Yes, they are. Uh, matter of fact, normally that's how it, it it comes to one of us is through a third party. Hey, look, firefighter so and so, I think he's having a problem or she's having a problem with this last call, and then we would approach it. And it's always approached as an open, hey, are you okay? Uh, not as what you do wrong or anything like that. It's it's approached as are you okay? Uh, we, we have to make our people okay if, for them to be able to do the jobs, and that's not just us. It's also the the deputies and all of us, we we kind of look out for each other. Uh, seeing if we see something with any of us, just like we had we had a vast incident a few years back with a 12 year old child of, that was hit and killed by a, uh, a driver. And our biggest concern that night was one of the, was the first deputy on scene because he performed CPR on the child, and we double tracked and checked back with Deputy Allen or Deputy Cruz. <coughs> Uh, to make sure that he was okay. Um, and I think you talked about one time that, that there is a chaplain that they can go to, go safe. <clears throat> uh, yes, they are. Uh, at that time, there was. We, at, this, at this present time in the department, we do not have a per se chaplain. I was the chaplain before I made fire chief. Uh, and um, I've asked Andrew to become our department chaplain since he's retired now. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, we, I've already approached uh, to try to fill that position with him. Yeah, um, my wife was out in Montana the reason that the chaplain came up, and she was trying to raise money for a chaplaincy for uh, Calisto, Montana. Anybody know Calisto is? And so we yeah, became pretty much involved in trying to get the chaplaincy you know, in this area also. So that's right. part of it. Uh, do you want to tell? Yeah, 
Um, it's very similar to what Chief Trustee said. Um, we do an immediate debriefing after any critical incident, and then typically the department will wait anywhere from 24 to 48 hours before they hold a debriefing for anybody who wishes to attend that debriefing. And that could be anywhere from dispatchers to, um, you know, the people who were on scene just to the people who were working that day who heard radio traffic. Uh, so they will open that up to everybody. And then any time there's an officer who's directly involved in an officer-involved shooting, they are, you know, put on paid administrative leave pending, you know, mental health evaluations and things like that, just until they can talk to somebody and make sure that they're cleared and that their mind's clear to be fit for duty. Um, we don't directly have a chaplaincy program that works with the sheriff's office. Um, for, for deputies and, and staffing, we do have like jail chaplains and people that they can bring in to be available if one is requested, but we don't have anybody within the department specifically that I know of. I would recommend, you know, Randy and, and Council, that um, you look into somebody Usually. And, and a lot of times it's not the call that you're working, it's the conglomerate of the calls that you worked over the your career and then one finally hits that nerve. Thank you, Mr. Kraybacher. Anyone else? <clears throat> Comments or questions? Mr. Cobb? Can I back up here for a minute? Sure. Mr. Brid, on the streets over here on Morriston Villa, Henry, uh, where the black top is dropped below the curb, mm -hmm. has anybody checked into that? Um, I'll have Howie go look at it. I know you had said something about I think the last meeting and being before that, and I have not checked up with Howie to make sure he has. So I will definitely. I mean, you have some over here in the Bicolaw Platte, plus you have some over here on uh, <coughs> Glen and sure. plus over Norwood too. Yeah, it's definitely something we we want to look at. I know you had mentioned it, but I, I Howie was out today doing some street stuff, and he had to leave a little early, and I did not have time to have my little meeting with Howie before today's meeting, but I will definitely find out tomorrow and then I will shoot council an update. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. All right. What were those streets again? Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, man. What street? Villa. Huh? What street did you say? Villa and Henry. Villa. Yeah, get, please Villa. go to the Henry. Henry. Go to the podium, your name and address, please, for the record. Uh, Laurel Slate, 401 West. Oh my gosh. Did you catch that? I did not. One more time, please. Laurel Slate, 401 West Jefferson Street. Good. Okay. Can the council change the fence ordinance? I wanted to know. Can we change the? Fence ordinance. We could. I have a fence right now that my company put up, and it's three feet high, mm -hmm. and he didn't wait to get the approval on the permit. OK. Now, I tried to get a variance. It didn't go through. Now I'm faced with either tearing it out or having it Fence. lowered to two Fence. and a half feet. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm a little confused in whether I have to, if lowering it two and a half feet is enough, or do I have to take the whole corner? Yeah, this was brought up at, uh, I think, a council meeting. We, you know, I think council's been made aware of this exact situation. Um, I wasn't at the... Uh, meeting for your variance um do you want to touch on this yeah 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 please um it, it's an unfortunate situation um our resident did everything she needed to do and i i feel for you 100 percent, which is why i put you into that bza unfortunately uh, um it didn't go the way i thought it would go um she's in a unique position she truly is and i would love this would be a great opportunity for our community to come together let me volunteer and do some work for miss slate um, as it stands now, and I, I had to go on because I was out for two weeks. Um, the fence was installed at a height of 30 inches. Our code says the max height is, is two and a half feet when you come in front and to the side yard or front yard. 
but we also have the traffic obstruction issue that's also presented in Mrs. Slate's yard as well because she is on a corner lot. And um, basically how we would de determine that visibility triangle is, I'm just gonna very elementary drawing here. So this is her house and say, we'll say this is the sidewalk around her house. And here is the street on the outside. So her yard is here. This is her sidewalk that goes around her corner lot. And here's the streets, okay? Well, when you're on a corner lot, what we do is we go to where the points intersect. Clearly that's right here at the corner. And our code states 50 feet. So we count 50 feet back this way, 50 feet back that way. And then we simply combine this stuff. So anything inside here that's a light sight, a sight triangle, it cannot be obstructed by view. Um, if the contractor she would have hired would have waited for the, per the per permit process to come through, this could have been completely avoidable. They installed the fence 30 inches high <coughs> and right to the property line around her front yard. So we have two issues that we're dealing with here. One is the height of the fence. And then also, which is more important to me, is the obstruction that you have here. And you're not, if you pull this stop sign here, what's the side street you live on? I'm sorry, I never Scott. remember. I'm sorry. Scott Street. If you pull up Scott Street here, you come to a stop sign. You don't have any obstruction from the cars on the street. You can clearly see those. Where the obstruction comes into play is actually on the sidewalk. So we have a toddler on a tricycle or a little kid that happened to get away from his mom and dad that's not higher than that fence. You're not going to see him. People are going to go through the stop sign. So that's the safety issue that's presented. Uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals didn't give a variance for her. So right now the fence has to be at our height and it also has to address that triangle visibility. If council were to change the code, which they have every ability to do, that still would not impact you since they changed the codes after the fact. It would help the people in the future, but you couldn't act off that code because it, they had adopted that resolution after the fact. Now I have been in contact with the company and I'm going to give I him a call to. tomorrow. He has done his due diligence and, and called me. Um, so he's waiting on my return phone call. Um, I had every intention of getting hold of this man tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, and basically just tell him what the code states. Well, I, I'm reading it at the, at the impedes the vision. It says material impede vision between the height of two and a half feet and 10 feet. So if I bring the corner down to two and a half feet, that shouldn't be a problem, correct? Well, that's your max height is two and a half feet on the fence. Yeah. So if I have it, but down you still to have the you have still have the line of sight issue with your. But that's under the line of sight issue right here. Visibility only talks about it being two and a half feet and ten feet. Okay, and then it then goes on at a point of intersection between two points between fifty feet of triangles. So you got to read the whole code. Mr. Bridge, you, so you've spoke with this company? Uh, he has been in contact since we had the VZA here. So he, I haven't touched base with him. We've been playing phone tag, but he has took an effort to call twice. I've called him back. Okay, I was just curious if you were getting any kind of feeling as to whether he was going to make this right. I, I haven't talked to him. I'm assuming, yeah, he would probably make it right since he's taken forth the effort. While you were on vacation, and uh, we talked about ways to change the fence to bring it up with ordinance. Mm -hmm what we thought the ordinance was. Yeah. And, uh, the easiest thing you can he, do is... He's willing to do... Yeah. So if you go to that, like where your sidewalks meet out front, and you walk from that point, you walk 50 feet back, and you do the other side of the street 50 feet back, I've already done it on GAS. It's really going to intersect right to where your front steps are. So you're saying anything on a corner, no matter how high it is, has to be not be there. I couldn't even have a bush one foot high. Is that what you're saying? That's what the code reads. Well, I know plenty of places in the city that have things like that in the corner, and nothing is done. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, we've had some conversation on this. Uh, is there anything that council can do to alleviate some of this problem uh, outside of changing codes 
and, and <coughs> hold that thought. No, and, if, and if we did change the code, because you stated if we changed the code, it wouldn't affect her, but couldn't we make it retroactive to include her in the, in the language somehow? I mean, I'm, I'm no attorney, but I stated in Hotel 6. Um, <laughs> I think that that would be um, something council can look into. I don't think that you'll be able to retro affect it, to be honest with you, but I'm no attorney either. Um, the height, I mean, these things are there for a purpose and a reason, and that is strictly for safety purposes. The height, um, the height I understand, sir. The, the uh, personally, I think 50 foot's a little extreme on a corner. I think 25 foot back from the corner, or some even 20 cities, foot, some would, cities have would 20 probably foot would probably work. But the uh, and also, does council us have a have any recourse to override, say, the board of zoning or the appeals or whatever boards we have there? You don't. The board of zoning appeals you do. You do have the authority to override planning board, but not the board of zoning appeals. Once the point of board of zoning appeals has their decision. It's set in stone, and it is actually located in the Board of Zoning Appeals section when it comes under code. Okay. So, like I said, the best thing that we can do is come together as a community and find a way to help out Miss Lee because we all—I felt horrible for her. She did everything she's supposed to do, and unfortunately, when it comes to administering the codes, I don't have the ability to sit there and give, you know, hey, it's no big deal, don't worry about it. That's—I I have no authority to do that. Right, and, and I understand yeah. that. I, I think the contractor is willing to. Probably, I would say he's going to have to take the fence down, according to our current codes and regulations. I think the contractor will come out and do that, based on what she said. He's willing to, to do what hopefully I think you said necessary. Yeah. The uh, I was hoping we were hoping we could do some kind of modification that would bring it up to code. The the only modification like you're not going to have your yard fenced in on the modification. Because if you set both those back 50 foot, and can I, can I say something? Yes, sir. <coughs> I, there's nothing that says just rip this fence out. You guys change the code, and then she puts it in after you change the code. So if you go in, that I hate to say it, but I'm just being very honest. <laughs> but that's but a, this amendment yeah. will not affect her current situation. Right. The work has already been done. If she tears this fence out. You guys change the code because some cities have that 20 mm -hmm. feet back only from. The some have 25, we yeah. have 50. Yeah. You change it, that cone becomes effective. She has a new fence put in to the current standards. That's the only way it's going to alleviate that. Okay. Does that make sense? That, it's that, not that, being shady. That's just a very honest way to approach it. That, that, that does make sense. You know, uh, nothing's preventing uh, that from happening. Well, <clears throat> but, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Point of intersection. So that's where that sidewalk would intersect. But even it is from the middle of the road, it's 10 Hang feet. on just a second, Jim, if you don't mind. Hold on just a minute. Mr. Rich, what type of fence is that again? I know we talked about it's it. It's a wood picket fence. Wood picket it's a picket fence. fence. With so you, gorgeous yeah, fence. Yeah, like you can gorgeous. see through it, though? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can see through it depending on what angle you're at. Right. Let's just, if you're staring straight at it, you're not seeing through it. I, I, maybe just that, but if it has an angle like that, it's a little more difficult. It's where the slats line up. And here's the thing, if you guys want to look at that, I'm all for allowing people enjoying their right to their property, 100%. You know, there's nothing that says if you guys change the fence code, let's say if it's chain link fence up to a height of four feet, which is the standard chain link, to allow someone to actually fence in their front yard. I have a dog, I would love to fence in my front yard. But there comes stipulations with that. You will got to make sure that weeds don't grow up in front of it because the moment you block it, you have that visibility. You can see straight through a chain link fence if there's no growth around it. Mm -hmm. So the visibility thing's not there. So you give your citizens an ample opportunity to enjoy their property as they see fit. In Mrs. Slate's case, it's the front to put to fence in her front yard. Then you also uh, pay attention to those safety requirements. You know, the moment someone doesn't cut their front yard grass or they got bushes growing in there, we can't. And you're right, Miss Slate. There's plenty of houses out here that have a bush in their front yard. You know, well, there's some and we can go at them. Between sure. the sidewalk and the yeah. street, and they've got high plants. Up there. You know, so it's like I said, code enforcement. It's a it's a tough, 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 tough job. But if you're looking at a way to alleviate this current section situation, let's come together as a community. What can we offer, Miss Slate, if the contractor don't make it right? If the contractor makes it right, takes out that fence. You guys, in return, 
look at that code because a lot of our code remember a couple months ago maybe four months ago we amended we amended our front porch projections to allow people to put an addition onto the front porch because they were getting in these uh, very weird circumstances to where they had to go apply for a variance just to put a front porch addition on their house so it can be done i have pictures of my fence if anybody wants to look at yeah it. pass them around yeah mr mayor i do want to miss hopkins the only thing about her taking her fence down. I drove by it after the meeting last time. It is a beautiful fence. The only thing about her taking her fence down, we changed the ordinance. Then she puts her fence back. Isn't that a double cost? That doesn't. Well, that's that's, that's her. On the that's, that's going to be her issue. That's. Uh, I, I don't want to say it in the wrong way, so I guess that's her business. Well, I already stopped for, him but. and I'm going to check. He's not been paid. Well, I didn't want to say that if you wanted to say <laughs> yeah. that. She's already, yeah, she's already stopped painting on it. Yeah. But I don't think he, he would put a fence up for me after the fence. You probably yeah. don't know it yet. I, I, well, I, I think what we should do is, Mr. Bridge, is my opinion, yeah, that's, yeah, you can clearly see through that for the most part. At least, I don't know the angle if you're setting it. Well, yeah, there you there go. You go. <laughs> so I, I would like to look at the code again. I'm not saying that's so we, and I'm not saying not to either to maybe look at changing it. Um, I mean, I don't want to give the appearance that anytime someone comes in and can, you know, has a, you know, a problem with one of our codes, we instantly are just going to change it to, to make a, an individual happy. But I, but to a degree, I, you know, I definitely think it needs looked at. Um, I think what you should, what we should do is, is wait to hear what kind of response you get from the contractor and then kind of well, I mean, it's something that I was going to bring up to you guys eventually because that's one half of the fence code. The other half of the fence code that I have a big problem with is the one that dictates swimming pools. Okay, right now the code states if you want a swimming pool of 18 inches more in depth, you got to have a five foot fence around your property. Well, a lot of these, we don't have new housing stock in New Carlisle except for Twin Creek. So a lot of these houses, if they don't have a privacy fence, there are, there's a standard four foot chain link fence in the back. Well, if you got your fence back, uh, you have that four foot fence around there, you cannot have a swimming pool because it's off by a foot. So what people do is they'll go and add to that fence, make it a foot higher. Or they'll put walls around the actual pool itself. Excuse me, because the walls of the pool can act as your fencing. It's a total undue hardship. If someone wants to get in your backyard to go in your pool, one foot of a fence is not gonna make a difference. And what it does is it puts them people in a very bad position. They, they can't enjoy their property because our code states you gotta have a five foot fence. So there's multiple things of the fence code that you guys can look at. And part of our planning and zoning code is rather antiquated. It hasn't been updated in a very long time. It was a cut and paste job when the city uh, adopted it back in the day. So it, it definitely something that can be looked at. Okay. Yeah, it just says fence. It doesn't say what type of fence it should, should be different for different types of fence. Mm -hmm. So privacy fence in the front, that's going to extract more vision than a chain link or mm -hmm. split rail fence or and that goes fence. back to that that section of the code that you're looking at yeah. there's actually a definition section that defines all those things and fences is just defined as a fence it doesn't go and say privacy fence you're right it doesn't break it down to the type of fence it just says fence correct mr cobb <coughs> mr bridge mm -hmm. who issued the building permit for that no one did no one did either what happened sir was the contractor filled out the permit and he dropped it off at the city building Okay, we, it, it can't, we are allowed up to 30 days to process those permits. It doesn't take that long, but that's how long it can take. What he did is he dropped it off, and instead of waiting the couple days for us to call him back saying either was approved or denied, he immediately went to her house and started to work. So by the time I looked at the fence, is he in violation? Hang on, I mean, that's, by the time that I looked at the thing and I denied it, it was already determined the fence was already up and done and i had went out and went to mrs slate's house and had a good conversation with her uh, checked it out um, and there's i mean it was in violation across those two different spectrums okay. so since the contractor took it on his own to go ahead and put the fence up it ought to be his responsibility to move it that is a civil dispute between Ms. slate yeah. and the guy she hired to do her fence well i mean since he did not wait till the city give him all the permits and permission to do it, he done it on his own, then he should have to take it back down and, re and move the fence like it should be. Yeah, but we don't have any legal authority to make him do that. That is an issue he, between- He said he would do it, so. Now, what that does, does it give Ms. Slate fantastic ammo if she has to take this to court? Absolutely. 
But unfortunately, we have no jurisdiction to tell the company it has to come and manually take that business down. Good, Mr. Powell? Yeah. All right. If you have something, Linda, can you go up to the podium? That's all I wanted to know. Okay. If, if somebody, if a contractor builds without the permit, is he in violation of anything? Yeah. But like Randy said, there's nothing we can do about it legally. That would be up there. So. He's the one who committed the violation. Right. Right, but it's a civil dispute between him and the person. Right. Hired. Between we did a not contractor and a, and a uh, citizen. 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 Right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> well, I think uh, we'll wait to see what maybe you hear back from the contractor, and then mm -hmm. maybe we can all let this uh, we'll see what everybody thanks and sure. move forward with it here in the future. All right, anyone else? Questions or comments before we move on tonight? Joe? Can, can you go up to the podium for me, Joe? Name and address, please. Joe Herdman, 200 North Pike Street. Uh, sitting in my house today, and the Gordon's delivery truck showed up to Bell Manor to drop off groceries. And I'm thinking, there's nobody there, buddy. I think a new driver doesn't know they moved. And I met Linda from the new facility, and she said their uh, cooler was out, so they're using the cooler at Bell Manor. I said, okay, I was just checking because place is empty and she said we still own the property it's ours I thought Bell Manor was sold and they closed on Friday like three weeks ago <clears throat> to a person that was putting in apartments I know that was the I know that's the plan I don't know if it was actually sold do you it's not, I, it's the closing good. was going to be on Friday morning after we had the Wednesday night zoning meeting or the other meeting we went to where it was discussed and the guy that was um, going to do the work and the turned into apartments more or less yes yeah yeah I know that's the plan proposed plan and supposedly they're working together and got the, the you know the floor plan laid out and all that but as far as it being actually titled and sold I do not know okay so I'm sorry what happening I didn't catch that uh, I, Gordon Gordon's is delivering food for the new facility north of town to Bell Manor because they're using the refrigerator because the refrigerator isn't working right now. And who confirmed that from Bell from Bancrest? Uh, her name was Linda. Okay. I mean, there could just been an agreement that they wanted to use it. Do you have insight? Okay. Let's see. Bell Manor, you are 100% correct. Um, the fire department has an agreement with um, Bancrest that we could use Bell Manor for certain types of training because uh, we're we've had to certify our personnel in active shooter training and after the last meeting hearing that it was sold I contacted Sherry who is the manager at Vancrest uh, today matter of fact and asked her about it and she said no that as far as she knows the, the property has not been sold yes there is someone interested and that is what they are wanting to do with it mm. but they have not signed did the close. closed or anything else on it and you're correct about the refrigerator Pancrest's cooler is out and they're using because they still own the property they're using that cooler at that property for their food for their cold food okay thank you thank you sir thank you chief she said it didn't go through <clears throat> the cell didn't go through any other questions or comments or she knows the public? Okay. <clears throat> all right thank you very much Moving on, committee reports, none tonight, resolutions, two for introduction and action. Okay, resolution 19-11R, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution to approve the phase of the traffic signal upgrade program along Main Street, State Route 235, at the intersections of Jefferson Street and Lake Avenue in cooperation with the Director of Transportation in declaring an emergency. Wait a minute. omit and declare an emergency this is not an emergency okay. we don't have emergency resolutions 
I did not draft that legislation, but I will take ownership because I didn't approve it. Um, so it's not an emergency. Okay. It is not entitled emergency in resolution 19R. It is not an emergency. Okay, so council. Mr. Mayor, so moved. And that was Vice Mayor Lindsay? Correct, yes. Okay. And explanation of this, we have the traffic signal project going on. This is the final piece of legislation. It's been a couple of years coming into this point. Um, uh, once this is all said and done with, we will be having two new traffic signals installed on 235 and Lake and 235 and uh, Jefferson. Um, these two traffic signals are the new modern ones with the one single arm and the one light coming above. Um, and these two traffic signals will also communicate to help alleviate that, that traffic on 235, especially during peak times. Um, this is a very expensive project, and I'm happy to say that we are paying zero dollars for this. We got a lot of federal funds to do so. Uh, because we got federal funds, and even though our contribution is zero, which it says is right here on this legislation piece, we still have to go the formality of this final legislation piece. And that's simply what's in front of council today. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions? I do have one. It was Mr. Bridge. Is this going to be high enough so the semis don't hit it when it comes um, to yeah, yeah, I'm sure ODOT took that to consideration. <laughs> <laughs> because the one we have now is getting beat Eight and a half feet tops. How many? Eight and a half feet. That's it. Oh, I'm yeah. <laughs> well, then I'll have to drive someplace else in my truck, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely take all that to consideration. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Council, any other comments? Ms. Burton. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Cobb. You're right. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> I got to go, though. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Motion accepted, 5-1. Moving on to resolution 19-12R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution declaring the necessity of improving the streets of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Council? Mr. Mayor, so moved. Second. And an explanation of this resolution, uh, this is the first uh, legislation piece that we do that I mentioned earlier for our street lighting assessments. Um, this resolution declares the necessity of lighting them, and council would have to vote on that. Council, any questions or comments? Are you ready, Ms. Burner? <clears throat> Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mr. Cobb? No. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Motion accepted, 5-1. Thank you very much, and dropping down to ordinances, uh, six for introduction tonight, one with action. Yeah, so our first one is ordinance 19-20, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8-19-19 an ordinance to approve the editing and inclusion of certain ordinances as parts of the various component codes of the codified ordinances to provide for the adoption of new matter in the updated and revised codified ordinances to provide for the publication of such new matter and to repeal ordinances in conflict therewith. Moving on to ordinance 19-21E, introduction, public hearing, in action tonight, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of roadway de-icing rock salt and declaring an emergency. Council. Mr. Mayor, move to accept ordinance 1921E. Second. And next place this ordinance, this is a yearly ordinance we do every year, and this has to do with the winter road salt that goes on our roads. Every year we bid it out. We are part of the Southwest Ohio uh, Purchases for Government, which is Swap G4G. Um, and basically we had a few companies come back on that bid. Cargill won that bid. And some highlights of this is it's $89.95 per ton, but there is no minimum buy. 
Council, any questions or comments for the city manager on this? When you're ready, ma'am. All right. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. Moving on, Ordinance 19 22, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8 1919, 19, and ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Ordinance 19 23, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8 1919. 19, an ordinance levying assessments for the improvements of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Ordinance 19-24, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8-19-19. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility costs for collection with real estate taxes. Ordinance 19-25, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8-19-19. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. Thank you. you want to go ahead and finish the other business? All right, moving on to other business, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. Uh, the Crime Watch meeting will happen Wednesday, August 13th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Thank you very much. Uh, before we move on to uh, our adjournment, we will be going into the uh, executive session this evening to discuss employment with public employee. As far as I know, no other uh, action will be taken after that meeting occurs. But uh, Also, just to touch base, some of you who may or may not know that Becky McKenzie has resign her seat on council for personal reasons. And uh, with that being said, uh, the clerk of council has placed a legal ad in the Spring Springfield paper, correct? Correct. That will be in starting tomorrow, that we will start the process as, as, as we have done in the past to appoint a new council member to fill that empty seat. <coughs> uh, applications will be submitted at the city building. Uh, the deadline for that will be August 16th, uh, which is a Friday at 4 p.m. And then council will set up a uh, meeting where we will interview applicants appoint the new person to fill the vacancy so i just want to share that with you in case you are not aware uh with that being said mr. that's mayor. all i have mr mayor just have Hold something just a second was it on the same subject okay mr vice mayor i have something under other business that uh i think needs to be addressed and and uh attended to this evening yes, sir i have uh printed out packets for people to look at. The, in uh, regards to resolution 1909R that uh, this council made a motion to have this written and then at the last meeting this resolution died for a lack of, uh, of motion. So I am bringing it back up tonight, since it was not voted on, to have a vote on this. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I move that we accept resolution 1909R. I don't want to interrupt, but if this is going back for vote, you need to break rules of council to put it on the agenda again. That's we did? Okay. I don't know. I'm asking. That's what I was thinking. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I would think so. Since it's the. I don't know. I I don't. I, I really don't think we do. But if you want to, we can. Uh, under other business, uh, that's how this was originally written. It was under other business, with a motion and a second and a vote. So uh, I will stand with my motion. And Mr. Mr. Lindsay, may I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Okay, so the, the concern is, is that we uh, counsel to have this put together. Yes. And then it was brought at the, I think, the last meeting, like you said, yes. and there was no motion made on it. Yes, it died for lack of a motion. And you thought it should. 
I thought it should have had a vote, yes. So I would like to have a vote on it tonight. Why didn't nobody else make a motion to adopt it? I can't answer that. I wasn't here. <laughs> Point of order. Sir? Does this fall within the 90 day qualification? It does not apply because it was not voted on. That's only on mm -hmm. resolutions and ordinances that was voted on and turned down and or passed that you have to wait 90 days to readdress it. <clears throat> and in, in the, on page five, you will find that uh, language. Under F, reconsideration, I think it's the, the last paragraph, no motion, resolution, or ordinance having been voted upon shall be reintroduced within 90 days except for the majority occurrence of counts of council. This resolution was never voted on, so therefore that 90-day window does not apply. I do not know if it has to have broken rules of council. I think it does, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, Can we ask for a legal opinion? Um, and you, you're voting on it. It has to, I mean, you, you're assuming it has to be on the agenda. Uh, I, otherwise, you'll have no record of it other than the minutes. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm really not sure, to be honest with you. But if I had to guess, That's, I would say. Because it's not on there. A detailed document. Um, yeah. Mayor, Vice Mayor, how do you want to proceed? Because I, I don't know the answer. I didn't think about that, about it. The, uh, <clears throat> then I will rescind my, did somebody second it or not? I don't no. even know. I'd second it. You second it? Okay, you have to rescind your I second will. then. I will rescind my motion and then respectfully request this to be on the agenda at the next meeting. That we can do. And so we can get a vote on this up and down and put this to bed one way or the other. Vice Mayor, can I yes, give sir? a little history about why we're here and, and the other legislation pieces that go with this? Oh, want? absolutely, sir, yes. Okay, uh, a few meetings ago, um, Council had approved uh, <coughs> ordinance like 1905 or six. I can't remember. Uh, numbers probably wrong. But that ordinance, what it did is it amended and or repealed ordinance 17-14, mm -hmm. which stated what the mayor can give proclamations for. So basically, ordinance 17-14 said the mayor can only give proclamations. Oh, it said the mayor cannot give proclamations for certain items. They usually fall around religious things or high profile, high controversial things, things that don't deal directly with city business. That's the gist of what that ordinance said. Um, there are some issues with the former mayor with the frequency of the proclamations given, so council wanted to try to curb that. So the first step of that process was amending the original ordinance 1714, which the ordinance in 19 did, which it passed. Well, the second component of that is actually going and putting there what they wanted as far as how the mayor can give proclamations and put it into their rules of council. And that's, this is, that's the legislation piece that was died for lack of motion. Um, and that's how they are today. So basically, if this were to pass, it would severely strict the mayor in issuing proclamations as far as um, some of the key terms are you got to have majority vote at council. It has to be given at a council meeting. Um, so that's why we're here with the legislation pieces we are today. Uh, and I think Mr. Account Vice Mayor Lindsay just wants action on it. Passes or fail, he right. just wants action on it. Um, my personal opinion, no matter, mayor should be able to give a proclamation at his discretion. I think there should be some stipulations of what they give proclamations for, but proclamations are usually a mayoral duty. Exactly. Well, with, and I agree, you know, I didn't want to do this to begin with, but unfortunately, that's what it came down to. I mean, if we can't have, you know, people act like grown adults on council and not going around giving proclamations to everybody in the county and state without the rest of the council knowing, 
and that's what we're pushed to do. I mean, I've said it numerous times that a proclamation or a key to the city should be done in this building or wherever our council meetings are so it's, it's put in a legal form for you know, people years to come to be able to go back and look at those, those you know, documents and those pieces of history. It's very important, I think, for our community. Um, you know, so as long as, as everyone can, you know, work together and, and do those things, I, I don't feel there is a need for this. Uh, hopefully that problem is gone. But one of the things that we have to look at is, and if that's how council feels, that's great. I think it should be a mayoral thing, but we still have the ordinance from earlier in the year 19 that took away ordinance 1714, which is the stipulations about what the proclamation should be issued for. You know, so if council wants those to stick, like you don't give a proclamation for someone, you know, two counties away for whatever reason, right. that, political, that, what, that can be done right. then. Political you can, you can topics or things instead of doing this, how much Lindsay wants to do it. And another option is going back and repealing the ordinance 19 that was passed. And what that's going to do is take that ordinance away, put 1714 back to, to effect that says you can only give them for this things. And then how it's done is back the way it used to be. That is for you guys to decide, but there are different ways that maybe this can be alleviated. However, Mr. Lindsay feels, Vice Mayor Lindsay feels comfortable and the rest of the council. Um, but it's kind of, I see where he, why he wants this, because it's almost like a half done deal. It, <clears throat> no, I yeah. to draft this and it's like kind of half done. Does that make sense? Right. Is that how you're viewing it, sir? The, and, and just to make it clear to the audience and, and uh, the internet people, I will never vote for this resolution. Uh, I voted against having this even drafted. I said at the time that, and the mayor hopefully will back me up on this. I said at the time that we as a council cannot restrict the duties of the mayor in his office. He said as much in that meeting, I'm thinking it's like a month ago now, that he agreed with me. And the this was brought up after he was the new mayor. This should have never been brought up, in my opinion. The, <clears throat> this was strictly geared towards the former mayor. The former mayor was gone. So why did we have to uh, spend funds to do a resolution that eventually came to this council and then died? That's my biggest problem with this. We spent money on something that nobody, why wasn't it voted on? I wasn't here, I don't know. Why didn't somebody make a motion to accept it and then vote no on it? I made the motion to accept it. I'm gonna vote no on it whenever this comes up. I do not agree with this. I do not agree with this council or anybody on this council telling this mayor or any other mayor in the future what he can and can't do in his office. The, the, there's no elected official can tell another elected official what they can and can't do in their office. It is against the law. And this is a blatant violation, in my opinion, of the law. And with that, I will stop and I will rescind, I think I already did, rescind my motion as long as this is on the agenda next meeting so we can vote on it up or down and be done with it. And then also I would request with the mayor's permission or councils to the ordinances you spoke of, having them on there also so we can fix all this stuff and get it where it needs to be. Well, because, he, because if he decides he wants to give a proclamation, that's his prerogative as mayor. If he wants to give a key to the city, that's his prerogative as mayor. I don't care if it's Mr. Ly or Mayor Lowry or Mayor Dumbo. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. That is his position. That is his authority to do. And above all, we don't respect the authority that the council members and our mayor has, along with our administration. And what are we all doing here? Playing games or what? That, that's what I, 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 I got to, uh, you know, I know I'm venting, but th this really irritated me. I, would, I voted no on this when it was voted to to uh, send it to have it written. I voted no, I expressed my concerns there. Uh, I was outvoted, obviously, because I'm looking at it. Okay, so I'm done, sir. You can have the floor back. <laughs> All right, just, just 
one more thing is this whole thing was started prior to the last mayor's resignation. So it was yeah. in motion. That's why it continued on. It, 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 the, the original ordinance was started to be drafted right. earlier. And that's why. Can I, can, I ask, can I ask a question just to streamline this with council? You have two options you can do. We can bring this back next week. You guys can vote on it. But what that's going to lead into, if it fails, we're still going to have to address the or, ordinance 19 from earlier in the year. Okay. As it stands now, this is Devin Water died lack of motion. So if I can have a majority vote of council, since it's been voted on, we have to wait 90 days, with the exception of majority vote of council, we can go ahead and reissue, bring back up ordinance 19 whatever that originally started this whole thing, and appeal that. That way, 1714 goes back in, because what you guys got to make sure 1714 states that the mayor cannot give proclamations mm -hmm. for such things. And that just restricts what he can give them for. And that just puts us back to where we started. Right. And it's going to be, I think it'll be a lot easier than going to have to, we, like I said, if we do this, now we still have to go back and do the other work. Right. But, but the other one I thought was done in 17, if I... Well, no, with the ordinance in 19. Oh, it was in 19? Uh, repealed that one. Yeah, we did one earlier in the year. 19 okay, that repealed the one in 17. 17. Okay. So okay. we take the one from 19 back right. and it reissued 1714, say, hey, we don't want that on the 1714 back, then it's back to normal. And we're cut out a few steps. That right, and, and, and that ordinance, if I'm sure Mike probably remembers it, uh, the uh, I don't have a problem with that ordinance, the way it's written. In fact, I agree with it. I think I voted for it when it came up. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, we, we need to, you know, get back to, to civility with with council and, and stop this nonsense, in my opinion. Can I ask council, though, one question here? I mean, would everybody agree that regardless, I agree with you, regardless who the mayor is, that it should be done here unless, you know, it's, you know, where, you know, big brand new buildings opened up and we need to do it there or something. Something to where it needs to be done outside of this this meeting. I mean, I think you know, and, and even if we don't, if we didn't go by this, no, we shouldn't have to you know make a vote. You know, if I wanted to give Mr. Cravacher a key, I wouldn't want to announce it in front of the whole you know, and then ruin the surprise down the road. But uh, I think you know, I th would think council would agree that it should be done here, and we should at least be made aware that it's coming, and not be kind of blindsided about it a month after. It. In there. I, yeah, I, I, get in there. I mean, that's all I'm saying is that we should be communication be made. Aware. I, th I think if we're doing proclamations and keys of the cities, they they should be done here if at all possible. Like right. you said, it, right. it could be a situation that's a, a open a, an opening of a new business or uh, whoever's getting it's in the hospital or something. I mean, you know, then I wouldn't have the problem with just the mayor going or whoever wanted to go, but. Uh, but, yeah, I, I I concur with what you what you're saying. There was, was it should be done here. Okay. I see what you're saying. Uh, maybe like city hall or something like that. Or do all the oh. oh, I mean like when we open. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, uh, we can give ourselves a key to the city or property. Hey, no, be, no, no, no. Hey, that would be cool. Oh, okay. uh, you mean do them? Then. Yeah, do them. Well, then there would be no record of it unless you had the clerk there. That's yours. <laughs> Mr. Cobb. I'm sorry. Did you finish, Mr. Chairman? No. Sir, Mr. Cobb. Uh, first off, who authorized for this to be wrote up by the attorney? It was part of the original process. <clears throat> but who made the motion? I believe the motion was made by Mr. Cook and seconded by you, Mr. Cobb. No, sir. Well, I will go back and look at the minutes. I don't have them with me. But it, it happened two meetings ago, I think, that the two or three, two or three meetings ago that, that motion was made. And I think it was three meetings ago that motion was made. Well, like I guess say the motion died. It should be done with natural. <clears throat> but you want to pursue it, which is costing the city money. Cost the city money to have this printed, sir. Okay. Yeah. And to have the attorney. How much money? How much money, right. how much money have you cost the city, Mr. Cobb? How much money up. have you cost the city? Guys, hold up. No, no. no. Hey, yeah, I got that. Please, wait. Mr. Cobb, do you have anything else to add? <clears throat> you have the floor, still. 
Very good deputy up here. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cook, if you will, please. If you all remember, the reason is this was brought up, there was a lot of things that were happening with council, namely the mayor and the vice mayor, and none of the rest of council were apprised of it. And I'll go on to state the fact of giving the proclamation to Warren County for a right to life, which made us a little bit of the laughing stock of this city. Now, if the previous mayor wants to keep meddling in this city's business and keeps trying to pull strings through some members of this council, then I think we're doing ourselves a very grave injustice. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Anything? Yes. <clears throat> I feel that it should be put to bed and not just left hanging out there. I don't feel anybody's pulling strings because they want to keep things the way they should be. Good. Thank you very much. All right. Moving on. Um, like I said, we will go into executive session tonight to discuss the employment of a public employee. And after that, we'll come back in the normal session to I have a few things. Couple of things. Oh, okay. And will be no other business. Back to you, Mr. Cook. As you all are aware, uh, Mrs. McKenzie resigned. And before the boo birds get in on this and the social media, I want to enlighten everybody to the fact that Mrs. McKenzie resigned due to her personal reasons. At no time was the investigation that we recently underwent and Mr. Bridge alluded to a little while ago have anything to do with Mrs. McKenzie's resignation. She was not a person of interest in that investigation. Second factor. I've been on this council about a year and a half and been here many times prior to that. Since then, I've been discussing with a lot of the people the acoustics of this building. That was put aside when we assumed that council would move chambers into the old city hall uptown. Then I understand that we're going to stay here. So consequently, I would like to have a committee formed of approximately two council members and two or three members of the community, along with the service director, Ms. Kitko, to get this project moving that straightens out the acoustics in this building so that you can hear. I recently attended a BZA meeting the other night Happened to sit back in that back corner. City manager was sitting up here with his recorder holding it up in the air so he could get recorded everything that was being talked about at that meeting. Another situation developed that there were some plans laid on the desk, a mass migration up to the front. I think we definitely need to allude to our citizens whom we wish to have attend a council meeting that the possibility they might be able to hear we have an uh, air conditioning system that is totally off the wall we need to address that we need to address the visual system that we don't have here there are so many things that i think that we need to address and I believe this council, in the last budget session, allotted money to straighten a few of these problems out. We've not spent any of that money or done anything. So again, I would make a motion that we appoint a committee to get this matter resolved. Can I add to that? As we discussed it earlier, we would like to have a sound professional included into that. So council's okay with that. Right. 
Okay. So we have a second to put a committee together for the shelter house upgrades. <coughs> definitely something that we need to have done so if somebody wants to volunteer to be on that committee be greatly appreciated Come on, uh, committees. do we have a second i can hear a second no there's no second <clears throat> okay if the motion don't pass i'm i'll i'll just pick two council members to work with because it's not violation of the sunshine laws but we would like some i would like from the administrative side since you guys are here this is your, this is your home it would be very beneficial to have two council members giving their feedback on this project because what I don't want to get into is how or myself liking the sound and there might be a particular council member not still unable to hear because of echo or whatever the case may be. So it's, I think it's very important that we have at least two people from council on that helping the administration out with this particular project. Okay, so we'll say it dies of lack of motion, but what well, question? Sir. Uh, the, uh, would it be possible to, who was the guy you said, a sound, somebody, you, somebody said something about a sound? The sound, yeah, we w definitely want to get a sound professional <coughs> yeah. to assist us. How about contacting one and have a chat conversation with them and see what it might take and the cost and what their recommendations would be for try to kill the echo in here and, right, and that, yeah. that's what we plan to do but we still want i still would like some council members to give feedback during that period i know where i struggle hearing because where i sit i know we're probably i've sit in the audience before but you know um, someone up here might have you know slightly less hearing capability than i would you know so i we I, basically what i'm asking for is a first hearing set i guess that maybe mr if you can hear something or amy can hear something better than someone else but this is your guys's place of business so again i think it's very important that we have council assistance with this because i don't want to have to go through all this and something not be right because it is going to be i don't want to say expensive endeavor but it, we we just want to make sure that it's done correctly the first time um so if council don't want to vote on it um i'll just kind of pick people and see if you have the availability okay one second now so are we gonna let this die yeah. and then we'll have two people last chance for a second so no one on council is willing to help the administration during this project if i'm okay. available i'll help you i've looked up a few things i yeah. think with howie in the past um, i can pass that on so yes i can help okay on his days off yeah. in between lunch so do you need anything else then mr bridge no we're good so that motion going to fail yes it died okay i spent 25 years in radio i know a bit about sound oh the reason we have echoes smooth walls mm -hmm. to, to get rid of the echoes to make it more hear better you would have to have that one on every wall mr grim what are you doing next week that would be that would be <laughs> like foam rubber with project with projections throughout that would be quite expensive and it will destroy the rustic feel of shelter yeah, it won't be a cabin no more that's for sure you would probably you already have a sound system here all you need is an amplifier and a few strategically placed speakers and people will be able to hear just fine. Do you think though, say if we have the speakers going this way, is it gonna create an echo when it bounces off? It's such a short be, they space. Be, if they were over, they should be over in this area or at the back. Yeah, they will create an echo because of all the smooth wall. Okay. But to baffle the walls, like I said, it will destroy the rustic feel of the shelter house. So this is a borderline. I don't know anything about this. There's no kind of special paint you can get that can absorb the, the, the vibes. There's nothing that can absorb that shock. And it's all just, so that's why I see the it big would still be, places. It would still be a smooth wall. Smooth wall. I oh, don't operative word, smooth wall. Okay. We'll pick it up. We'll figure out something. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. 
I move that we adjourn the regular meeting to go into executive session to discuss the employment of a public employee. Fire Chief. Chief. Yeah, no fire. Sir. Just want to know that I hadn't been brought up and for the community this Thursday at 4 uh, four o'clock to 7 o'clock at the high school will be the county safety day for all the kids and adults, uh, the, all of area fire departments, the sheriff's department and everything will be involved. They'll have safety booths out there. They'll be giving away bikes to kids, uh, helmets, uh, doing bike safety, uh, fire department safety. And if you want to come out and watch the fire department and the, and the sheriff's department do total war contests, it's, it's kind of a neat thing, kind of fun thing for the community. It's also uh, preludes into the uh, national night out, that type of thing. Thank you, Chief. All right, and second. second. We'll do five and come back for executive. Call.